You're now tuned into me, 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 dollars worth of game, man. Listen, man. Looking like look looking like we got the king of New York up here today. We talking about numbers. We talking about numbers, right? Mm-hmm. Talking about numbers. Twelve billion. I mean, listen, 18, 18 million monthly listeners on Spotify. And when the last time you dropped? It's been two years. Damn. Talk about it. Nigga, you got 18 million Talk monthly about listeners it. on Spotify. You ain't dropped in two years. Talk about it. Two years. Speak bro. on it. <laughs> you. I mean, honestly, I feel like like Tom be flying. Like, because the last year just been for me, me just doing whatever. And the year before that just flew. I felt like I was on track. I felt like a year was all right. Two years was like, damn, all right. You feel me? Mm-hmm. You missing, you feel me? But 18 mil, we 30, I'm blessed, you feel me? You, know, you working on, the, you, you know, you, you got the new stuff, you worked on a good project, it's ready to drop. But, Facts. But first and foremost, it's a blessing. You know, you see what we got up in here, we got little TJ here, a.k.a. King of New York. Who? Lil TJ, a.k.a. Uh, King of New okay. York. Okay. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by NASCAR. NASCAR, first ever street race in the heart of Chicago. I'm talking about this is going to be in the heart of Chicago. The biggest names in NASCAR will battle on Sunday, July 2nd for 100, I'm talking about 100 laps in the NASCAR Cup Series. It's going to be in Grant Park, 220. It's going down. Drivers will be tested on an unprecedented, I'm talking about 12 turn Chicago street course running through the iconic. Grant Park, two-day music festival. I'm talking about, it's going to be a two-day music festival, so it's, it's not playing. I'm talking about featuring the Chain Smokers, Miranda Lambert, the Black Crows, and Charlie Crockett. It's going down. NASCAR, I'm telling you, man, this is big, man. I'm really digging this right now. NASCAR is going to bring, I'm talking about this the first time ever. The, I'm talking about the heart. I'm talking about the heart. Boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. The heart of Chicago is going down the biggest names in NASCAR on July 2nd. I'm talking about 100 laps. It's going down NASCAR Cup Series. Listen, Chicago Street Race 7-2 at 5.30 p.m. Eastern on NBC NASCAR. This episode of Me and I Was Worth a Game is brought to you by Dodge. There's a new breed of hornets sweeping the nation. Hornets. They are fast, powerful, and aggressive. It's the all-new Dodge Hornet. This is Dodge's first ever high-performance crossover. The thing flexes a two-liter hurricane, four turbo engine impacts up to 268 horsepower. The Dodge Hornet is fast, mean, and ready to sting. Mean. So when you're out and you're looking for cars, why would you look for anything other than a Dodge Hornet? Build yours at Dodge.com. So you can go to Dodge.com and you can build your Dodge Hornet from scratch. Exactly right? how you want it. Exactly how you want it. Just understand, Dodge Hornet is the new wave. Go get you one. This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Barstool Sportsbook. Now, uh, why would you deal with any other sports books when uh, we give out the best bonuses? Uh, we have the best parlays. Uh, we give you the best, some of the best picks. I mean, you get picks from Big Cat. You get picks from, 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 from Dave. You get picks from the one and only, uh, yeah, me, who, uh, as we speak currently, I'm up something nice. But uh, Barstool Sportsbook also is easy to use. It's right there. Let you bet on first innings. Let you bet on the first five innings. You know, it's a lot of things going on in Barstool. But you got to be 21 to gamble. And if you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. But why would you deal with any other sportsbook other than Barstool Sportsbook? When we are the absolute best. And it's just like that. Right? I know, I know, I know a little, you know. I know a little TJ, too. Grew up in Queens. I like, no. grew up in the Bronx, right? Facts. Grew up in the Bronx, yeah. Yep. Mom Dukes, OG Ebony. Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> I know. You know, I, I know Tion Alexis G, and that's who I yeah. know, you know <laughs> yeah. what I Okay, you know Tion. Okay. around with Smelly and Marky, you know what I mean? Rest in peace to Smelly, man. That's the nigga I know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> you know TJ to the 18 million, the fucking 12 billion total streams. I know little Tion Alexis G, and that's the little <laughs> nigga I know. You yeah. know what I mean? He's running around terrorizing yeah. the motherfucking <laughs> You yeah. ain't know I knew all that, did yeah, you? Yeah, nah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I know somebody that knows somebody. Yeah. Know somebody. Yeah. Know somebody. Rest in peace to Smelly, though. You know what Rest I mean? Rest in peace. You know what I mean? Rest in peace to good dude. You know what I mean? 
that situation happened when you was 14? Nah, I was huh? probably 15. 15? No, Come up to the mic. 14. Uh. I was 15. 15? Yeah, I was 15. Yeah, and that was like your best friend, right? Facts. He passed away in your arms, huh? Yeah. Yeah, man. Growing up in this shit, man, you go through some traumatizing shit, man. But, you know, for you to go through that at an early age and still be able to, you know, keep your sanity, still be able to elevate your game and stay focused and become the artist that you are today, man. I commend you for that shit, man. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? All right. Because, you know, I had a homie, rest in peace, to Alan Bunch. You know, I had a homie that similar situation happened. You know what I mean? And still to this day, I might just think about my man and start crying and shit. You know what I mean? And that was like 30 years ago. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? Rest in peace to Smelly, man. Rest right. in peace. Born but not forgotten, homie. Now, you know, you got the single out now, June 22nd. That's, you know, I call that the day of my birthday. Um, real, real life situation happened a year ago. You know, you're blessed to be here. It's a blessing. Um, how do you feel, man? You know, just being here and, and, and what was going through your mind when that transpired? I mean, I'm, I'm somebody who believes everything happens for a reason. And... What I could say is one thing I felt like I had like a funny energy on me like surrounding that town like that week or them weeks coming up and you know like I don't know like I feel like I feel like my instincts was telling me something was a little wrong you know what I'm saying and situation happened you can't control it I'm over blessed to be here and all I feel like I could do is just learn from it. Just learn from it. Just and be grateful to the fact that I got the chance to actually learn from it. Some people, you know, could have been over. Yeah, what what was you feeling though laying there like damn? Like what was your thoughts like? If I'm gonna be real, like that shit just like it's a blur. Mm -hmm. It's it's really a blur, to be honest. Facts. Um, you know, coming out the hospital, what was the first thing you was up on? Like, what was on your first thing that you done? Like, coming out the hospital, I'm not even sure if I realized what happened. I think I was fraud. Like, you know, I remember okay. I'm like on so much like meds. I'm damn near like a crackhead. Like at the point for me, cause mm -hmm. they got every they use every drug on me. You know what I'm saying I got shot a lot of times, so. Like, I feel like I ain't even really realized what was going on. Like, I was like, for me, I need to be monitored. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. For real, for real. Yeah, so you, you get out now, you know, you got back to it. And when did you know, like, I'm coming out, I'm coming back? You know, because this was a year. A year go by quick. That's not a yeah. long time. And you like, I'm going back and I got to go back at this shit. Immediately, I wanted to record. Um... From just being in the hospital, I just wanted to record. I just wanted to like get shit off my chest. Honestly, like I felt like I was trying, and it won't really come in. Like I'm like yo, like I can't rap right now. Like yeah. feel me? Yeah. But I'm on so much. Like it's to the point where like I, for example, when I first like, like woke up and shit, I couldn't even write. Like I tried to write and. You feel me? My script, like when I'm trying to write, yeah. it's not coming out. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm fucked up. You feel me? <laughs> like, for me. So, like, it just took me a second to to get back, to get back sturdy. But I just, I just wanted to record. I wanted to get back to life. You feel me? And at the same time, like, I kind of was just like, I, like I was, I was just in a rush to just get back to regular life because I ain't want nothing to feel like. Nothing stopped me, you know what I'm saying? I just wanted to, you feel me? Shit on everybody or just do better for myself, damn it. Just go up. How long did it take you to really start connecting with you? was like, oh, no, I still got it. Nah, listen, I never, for example, I never thought that I ain't have it, you feel me? No, well, what he mean, like, what he's saying when you ain't have it, when you was like, yeah, like you know, you try to write rap, back. your shit on script, but you're like, yeah. oh, man, I might so be I fucked up. So I started getting my rhythm back. Yeah. I, um... 
I feel like I'm a person that I'm a person that I go to the studio all the time. You feel me? Mm-hmm. And I might go to the studio and make a, like maybe two songs, three songs in a night. None of them shit is dropping. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like so, it's like I go to the studio probably like like in a month. Let's say I go to the studio thirty times. And plus, you feel me? Even though it's probably not the best thing. Oh, to you say, live in that joint? Yeah, you feel me? And even though it's not the best thing to say, I damn near am lazy with this being that like you feel me? I got a talent that I could kind of be lazy with it, and it's still been successful because I've been lazy with it honestly my whole time being an artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I go to the studio sometime. I go to the studio, we drink, we smoke. I might not even record, I might let someone else record for me, but I'm in the studio all the time. You right. Know? Now, I might go there, I might go there, you feel me, 30 days and make three songs that I might think about dropping and 10 others that I know I won't drop, you know? Mm-hmm. So, basically, for, for like putting the album together, I might have one song out of every two months mm-hmm. of the last two years that made the album. That's mm-hmm. kind of how it came together. I'm saying, Damn. and plus I feel like this album I just made it like one aesthetic, and I had one speech, one meaning, and one vibe. I'm saying like that's kind of how I feel like it's not like a bundle of music like how I normally and how do. How do you come up with the vibe and like that one that structure to stay? I'm staying in pocket right here. How do you was come it more up? like a feeling you was in because of what you was going through? I'll explain. I right, so the album name is Two Twenty Two. The reason why I named the album 222 is my first album is True to Myself. The second one is Destiny when they both got twos in it. Mm-hmm. And it's my third, so. Also, I got airlifted into the sky like a helicopter put me up in the air and I seen the footage and they're like, for me, they're like, yo, we taking off. And it was the time was 222. Mm-hmm. So I felt like that was, that was another reason. And it's an angel number. Mm-hmm. For me, so. The, basically, the... Basically, the project is just like the vibe or the aesthetic of the project is just me overcoming like the streets, relaying the people that's in the streets right now and just speaking my, my story. I got a little deeper than I normally do. I talk about family issues. Um, June 22nd, I talk about, express a little bit about how the day went. I'm saying in a certain halfway, halfway, you feel me, real halfway, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. type of way. And... I just get real deep. Like, it's really, you got to hear it to understand, you know what I'm saying? And I personally feel like every song is golden. I'm all the way 100%. Like, Jack and his album, I feel like it's my best album for me. Like, I mean, and and you know why you probably feel like that, too? Because it's, it's before you was making music, and I ain't going to say you didn't have a purpose, but you like you said, you was making music, oh, I make it sound this way, I sound this way, sound this way, whereas though it was like, you really locked in on your feelings, like, you know what I'm saying, and your emotions and what you was going through. And because when you start talking about family issues and that's some that's some deeper shit, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What and was the biggest lesson you learned? My biggest lesson is after after being because after you because you gotta understand you you're not no regular nigga out here. Facts. You a whole franchise. Facts. Yeah. Little TJ is a franchise. Facts. You feel what I'm saying? And a lot, and just seeing your team that's here right now, seeing how many motherfuckers work for you, that's not even behind that the scenes. your neck, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. God that, damn. That's not even behind the scenes. These is all the people that show up with you to do the podcast. You feeding a lot of motherfuckers, man. You feel what I'm saying? A lot of motherfuckers depend on you. That shit go a different way that day. A lot of motherfuckers ain't eating. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? We not even, even talking about your immediate family. We just talk about the motherfuckers that's hired. That's running the machine. That's running the machine. The business of TJ. You feel what I'm saying? So what was the biggest lesson that you learned coming out that situation? Because in every, every, every lesson is a blessing. Yeah. My biggest lessons, if I'm going to be honest. Yes, that's like, what we and, always you know, want you to be I doing. I kind of like... And I kind of like, I'm like, I'm so complacent with myself and I know who I am. It doesn't matter. And it's like, I kind of used to be the type of person to not like to say shit like that. It really, it really humbled me in a way. You feel me? It made me realize, yo, you're not invincible. You feel me? Yeah. Like, it, it really did. You feel me? And I, I had to really sit there and think, like, you feel me? Like, you get one chance to fuck up like that and it's over. Yeah. And you got another one. And this money and this music and none of that. Don't help the odds of me getting another chance. Yeah. 
it don't, you feel me? So I know I'm really blessed, like, you know? And it just it just it just it just show me that, you feel me? Think about everything you're gonna do wisely and just always remember you got one chance. Yeah, I respect that life. now. You know, I um I respect that, man. Because you know a lot of niggas that come on here in front. In front. And yeah. and, and won't keep it G. Yeah. And you know, losing your life, man, ain't nothing cool about that shit. Not at all. If it ain't nothing getting cool shot, about, ain't nothing cool, cool about, about that, that shit. No. You feel what I'm saying? It's especially when you got when when you the when you the king of the family, when you the breadwinner of the family, when you, you the one that provide for so many motherfucking people to be able to live a, a, a little somewhat of a better life. None of that shit ain't cool. So I'm glad you was able to be like, man, that shit humbled me, man. Mm-hmm. Because that say a lot. You feel what I'm saying? I'm going to keep it real. You could have said some cool shit. We would have let it slide. You would have left. We would have been like, he don't get it yet. He just kicked some cool shit. He was worrying about what the people think. Yeah. What the... No, man. Nah, it's real shit because I'm going to be honest. Like... Like, I had security sometimes when I do, like, a show and shit. Yeah. I live my day-to-day life on June 22nd. I'm speaking real shit. Like, I'm walking around with probably two of the bros. They probably shorter than me, my age. I got 500 on my neck, comfortable. I never think about nothing happening. I'm like, nah, you feel me? Like, you might see, like, a little internet, this, 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 cap shit. A lot of shit be cap vlogs. Mm-hmm. My day-to-day life, nothing normally go wrong. Right. Nothing go wrong. We good. Right. You know what I'm saying, and it was that one time that shit went left. I was like, damn, how? You feel me? And it's like I could afford a security guard. Yeah, you can afford a motherfucking Easy. army, nigga. Yeah. Easy, multiple. And I'm like, you feel me? It was like I don't need that. Why not have help? You feel me? Why not? Yeah, why There's not? nobody to prove nothing to at or Why yeah, not have help? You feel me? All. The most help and protect the brand. It's like you feel me? It took me a second. I, a lot of people too They they be chatting I be seeing comments and stuff People also gotta remember Like you feel me I kinda I hit when I was young You feel me I damn near Like you feel me It be taking It be taking a second For me to grow into certain shit And realize shit But that shit right there Life for real For me I don't even For me I don't even Think the same way I'm not doing certain shit I used to do before You feel me right. I'm gonna say something Like I heard you say the comments Right Mm-hmm. Social media is a tricky thing because these comments then finesse people out of their position. Sure. The comments and um, just sometimes people that might don't you know you might had you know had problems with in the past. Um, you got to always remember who you are. I I think I think as you looking at you now you you becoming a man more and understanding, taking responsibility, being accountable. That's a blessing to see that at the young age that yes, you it are. Is, man. Because sometimes the problem is a lot of y'all young brothers, y'all be so successful, y'all have shit going on, but y'all really don't be knowing who y'all are and how big y'all are. Because y'all be operating like, no, I'm just a bro from around the way. No, you're not. You, you, like you said, you're a franchise. You're the real deal. So you can never let a comment, because you don't have to explain that to nobody. A comment or somebody that's back in the hood Finesse you out of your position. Cause you know how dudes go on the gram, start woofing, saying all type of shit. Oh, nigga. Oh. You ain't gotta prove that you ain't a pussy to nobody. And sometimes when you get that money, you be like, damn, these niggas trying to fuck with me because I got I'm rich now and they think I'm a pussy. And sometimes as a young cat, you be like, I gotta show these niggas I ain't a pussy. And that's the dumbest thing you could do. Cause showing somebody that you ain't a pussy, that ain't got nothing going on, it ain't gonna bring nothing to you, you know. When you think about your mother, Ebony, it ain't going to add no value to your family and to what you got going on. Like, bro, you go anywhere you want to in the world. You think you got to show a nigga down the way that you not no pussy that's not going nowhere and don't really care about their life? If a motherfucker don't care about their life, they don't care about your life, so they trying to finesse you out of your life. So you always got to be mindful, man. And I know as young, as a young man, you just like, sometimes the ego come in. And that's why the most powerful shit you said is that it humbled me. It got you seeing life different because... It ain't nothing for a nigga to say some dumb shit on Instagram. Now you and the bros like, oh, we got to see this nigga. You, you, you're rich as shit. You ain't got to see nobody. Like, you're a millionaire. You don't have to see nobody. Like, millionaires don't have to prove to people down the way that they not pussies. That don't get no value to you. So you always got to be mindful. Like, even just looking at the net. Who gives a fuck what somebody say in the comment? Like, you really living your life? You really taking care of families? You'll have a motherfucker 
in the middle of the ghetto somewhere that ain't got shit going on around the way, talking shit, man, you should have done this, man. Why you ain't slide? You a pussy. Bro, you don't even know how you're going to pay your bills. You, you're living in your mom crib. So you got to be, you know, you just got to be mindful, man. But the, the greatest thing that you said, man, shit humble to you. So when the, when the humility come, your eyes get open and your senses get stronger. Because now you taking shit and you receiving shit differently. So just always be mindful, man. And you got a, you got a hell of a team, bro. And you always got to got to keep in mind that your actions could take money off the table. This is a table. This table belongs to you. There's a bunch of money on here. And you don't want to be caught in situations where you're leaving a lot of money out there, bro. There's a difference between $5 million and $25 million a year. Especially when you got the team. Your team is strong. I talk to you. They strong. They, they infrastructure. They, got, they know what to do. So it's a big difference. And, you know, just having the right team and being on point and being receptive to the game is a wrap. Because like you said, you could have been out of here, but you here for a reason. Make history on their ass. You know what I'm saying? Because rather you know it or not, yeah, bro, for a reason, bro these people fuck with you. You got 18 million monthly listeners on Spotify. And ain't dropped in and two I'm years. And I'm not mentioning no names. These niggas that never went nowhere. They ain't got nowhere. They ain't got 10 million. They ain't got 15 million. You got eight. And you just chilling? So imagine when you come out. So when you come out, that means you had 30, 40 million monthly listeners. That means you that nigga. Don't never stop... Understanding that you that nigga and you special, you different, bro. You ain't regular, right. you know? Absolutely. And to all the youngins out there, man, that's doing it, that's on a certain level, put some security around you, man. Mm -hmm. and, put security around you. Right. Fact. Love your life. Love oh, yourself. Yeah. You don't got nothing to prove to nobody. Stay sturdy. And Fact. make sure it's a security nigga that you got respect for. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? You go to the club, you drink, you party, you smoke. You and your homies, y'all doing the same thing. Guess who ain't doing that? The security nigga. His job is to look the fuck around and see the niggas that's on angles, that's on dumb shit. And if he feel like, yo, we got to get the fuck out of here, we getting the fuck out of here. Because the nigga's job is to protect your life. You are not regular. You feel what I'm saying? That be the nigga's job. Yo, dog, I don't feel this shit, dog. We out of here. We out of here. We out of here, man. We got to live to see another day. We'll be at another party tomorrow. And then we got another party the day after that. And then the motherfucker next weekend. And then all weekend after that. And then the next weekend. So listen to the niggas that you pay to protect you, man. You know what I'm saying? Your life is very fucking, it's worth a lot, man. And it's worth more than the party. So sometimes when a nigga say, we got to get the fuck out of here or we out. I don't know what he's saying, but we got to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> This episode of Million Dollars Worth of Game is brought to you by Omega Account Solutions. Mm -hmm. Attention small business within, I'm talking about five to 5,000 employees. All you small businesses, you are responsible business owners who have continued to pay taxes and employ staff during the pandemic. Omega Account Solutions is a small business champion. I'm talking mm -hmm. about they're the champion. They come Helping to save you your day. and your business get back the money you deserve through the CARE Act. How, much, how much they give back? They get up to 26,000 per employee. So if per you have five employees up to five thousand employees. When you sign up for this, twenty six thousand per. You get twenty six thousand per employee. Recover the payroll taxes you overpaid as a refund, a refund up to twenty six thousand dollars per mm. employee. Even if you got the PPP loan, learn if you are a good candidate in less than ten minutes mm. with a free consultation. Omega was recently named the number one best ERC company for getting your ERC funds by, by Merchant Maverick, a small business comparison and review site. There's still time to find out if you qualify and file your claim. Again, up to $26,000 so let me just break this down for you. Employee. If you got a small business, mm -hmm. you got employees, you might be owed some money. So all you got to do is ten take minutes. 10 minutes out your time, fill this out. If you got 10 employees, you might get 10 times 26000 If you got five employees, yes. five times. If you got 150 employees, 150 times 26. It depends. It but depends. I'm going to say this. You got to, before we find out any of this, you got to take 10 minutes to, to see if you qualify. And what I need you to do now is call 855-505-DAVE. 855-505-DAVE or, or visit omegataxcredits.com slash barstool sports right now. Right now. Stop playing games. This episode of Me and Isles Worth a Game is brought to you by New Amsterdam, Amsterdam Vodka. Vodka. Now, uh, uh, life ain't going your way. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. 
uh, you caught your wife cheating today. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Uh, we thought the check was coming, but it didn't come your way. Shout out to New Amsterdam Vodka. Yes, it's distilled five times. It's filtered five, three times. Three. For a clean, crisp finish. It's also the official vodka of Barstool Sports. Yes. So let's get that out the way. So when you out and about at your local liquor store, don't you dare walk past that goddamn New Amsterdam Vodka. You better not. You scoop it up. You hold it. You hug it all the way to that goddamn counter. Yes. And then you swipe that card and you pull out that cash and then you dash. You get home, you pour it in the glass. I mean, you make that motherfucker splash. Splash. Give it a little taste, but make sure you taste at a pace. Because this is New Amsterdam vodka and you don't want to put it to waste. Yes, I like you it. You hear me? I'm, I'm a bad motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. took a sip of it, though, so I'm feeling a little nice. good right now. You feel what I'm saying? But shout out to New Amsterdam vodka, the official vodka of Barstool. And uh, make sure when you're out and about it's great for pre-gaming, great for all the all sports, that. great for boxing, great for picnics. Get you some New Amsterdam and vodka. vodka. Right, right. You know, uh, when you was making an album, you know, who's some of the people you wanted to have on this album, man? Um, you, you made that call. You ain't got to say nothing if you don't want to say it yet, because nah, the album ain't out nah, yet. Nah, 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 nah. The album ain't, ain't out yet, for sure, but I got I got one, I got one, I got one feature right now that I feel like on the album that's like a special one, just like in my head, you feel me? It's really, it's every song is special to me, mm -hmm. but I got one that's a special one that I probably throw people off, like, oh, you feel me? Yeah, it's like It's one that. of those. It's one of those? Yeah. It's like one of, like, I see you in a, uh, you on polo real tight. Yeah. It's like a brother from Shout another Shout out to Neff. Yeah, right. man, we fuck with polo. Yeah. How was it having brothers like him that go through the same situation with you being young, being rich, being successful with the eyes on you? Because I'm starting to see a lot of brotherhoods within the industry right now where it's, though it's like a lot of people connecting from different cities and really building bonds like that. Yeah. What, what was so important about y'all building that brotherhood? I mean, like, when me, like, Polo, like, one of my favorite artists of the new generation, for sure, like, you feel me? Mm -hmm. I, like, I respect the show. I feel like he underrated, you know what I'm saying? And, like, it's kind of, like, damn near, like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, I feel proud of everything, like, let's say, he accomplished because I feel like we in the same boat. Like, for example, people that do really, really well, but that kind of don't do certain shit with the game. That kind of stay in like one little pocket. So when he went, I went. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. and, and and that's my boy. We came up like literally the same time. I think we damn near probably hit a million views on our first video at the same time. Mm -hmm. you feel me? Yeah. Got a platinum record around the same time. You right. know what I'm saying everything. So right. Like you multi play. You a multi platinum artist. Do it feel like it? Do you feel it? Or do you just be like? I kind of like I I swear like just to like for somebody that wouldn't know me. Or like I kind of feel so regular. It's like it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes, like for example, I was walking earlier and it was this girl. She was probably like a younger girl for me. She walking, she on the phone, she talking, and she look at me. What the fuck, she look at me like that for for me. And she like, oh my god, for me. And it's just like I be forgetting myself. Yeah. <laughs> like, cause I'm a real person, and a lot of the people that I'm around are people that like. I really, really know. I don't really be around strangers. It's politics and uh, like halfway people a lot of times. So it's like people who feel, make me feel normal. So I be forgetting a little bit. I want to get to the point where I can't forget. Yeah, well, you should be at that goddamn point because I just seen some of you performances from overseas, and I don't know yeah. how you forget. You they was falling the fuck out over there like Michael Jackson. I beat was them before. myself though. I beat them myself. Yeah. Like I promise. Like I go to like. Like, I walk in the spot with my glasses on, my hoodie down, you feel me? Out of the just walk in, feel me? Go eat at a nice restaurant, go back to the studio crib. Yeah, you like the restaurants. Yeah, I, I, love, yeah. I live a private life, you feel yeah. me? I don't really be too much. I'm not a club guy. No. Nah. Not a club guy. Yeah. Nah. That's how I am now. Now, with, with, with the new album coming out, right? Yep. Is, I, is, 
Is it you? You, you is I Ice Spice gonna be in there? Y'all real close. <laughs> <laughs> no, <'cause that's, laughs> nah, nah. I don't think I don't think Ice gonna be in there. Uh, listen, project. listen. Why you? Why you smell like I this? You said, I know you said something about you was talking about your personal shit. So I don't. Oh, you should see yo, You see how he cracked. Nah, nah. I don't. I don't think she gonna be in this project. I'm a little sauce too, yeah. but I don't think I don't think she gonna be in this project. Nah. <laughs> She doing her thing though. Shout out to Ice. Shout out to Ice Spice. Facts. You dating anybody, man? You dating lately? Nah. Hey, you like the single life? You know what it is? Like for for like a long time I'll be looking for a girlfriend. But you know. Yo, would you be looking? So how you go about looking? Like you, you I, don't, going to I, don't, I don't be looking. Pause. Let me rephrase that. <laughs> I'll be like, girlfriend, um, like basically. I'll be open to having a girlfriend. So me. all these girls is out here, they know now, listen. For me. He open to having a girlfriend. So if y'all seen, holla at him. I'll be open to have a girlfriend, open to having a girl. I'm a little sauce for me, but I just be feeling like I should be way a little bit. Just because you feel me? I don't know, bro. I don't be wanting to play games once. When you say play games, break that down. Once I get me a girl, she my girl. Like, you feel me? Yeah. Hey, nah. <laughs> Don't be playing with. So, what's uh, playing games? Right in New York. Like the, New nah. York he, the New York had <laughs> to come out this nigga. <laughs> you know I mean? Once I get a girl, she my girl, son. Facts, nigga. Like, n- nobody else better not look at her, nigga. For real. I'm just saying. <laughs> but, like, you feel me? But that's why I don't really be too much, you feel me? And then plus, like, yo, I'm, like, for me, if anybody gonna know I'm TJ, you feel me? Like, yeah. not even to be cocky, bro. Like, I know, like, what niggas, girls is out here doing, you feel me? Yeah. So I ain't even trying to get involved with these type of games. <laughs> like, we not even about to play like that Hold on, hold on. Like, take, take that back. So so no, you said you see no, the, you DJ see in there like this. You married? Yo, you heard, like, I ain't gonna lie, shit be getting wild. It be getting, I'm like, you like, man, you be at the festivals, the club, I'm at the, the, the shows, nah. and you see some shit, huh? Yeah, I got a boyfriend. See yeah, some been, shit. He's yeah, been like, my boyfriend for five be, years. Be disregarding, like, for real? You know what it is? It's a funny age and era, and a lot of the time, like, you feel me, people in position, yeah. be having your way to a certain extent, yeah. you feel me? So I just be damn near feeling like I don't know if it's a me thing, you feel me? But yeah. I be feeling like You know what I put it noticed. like this. Hold it's weird, right? I be feeling like if you get that shit up too easy, you like, you feel me? You just like uh uh-uh. But then I ain't waiting neither. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't say you you. You gotta look at it like I'm me. Yeah. Yeah, like you feel me? So and then plus on top of that, like you feel me, I just be playing on type of games. Good girls out here, though. Yeah. Feel me, but I'm just waiting for that. That's that's the summary of that. You you know what I noticed though? What? All the young rap niggas that we sit down with, like ninety percent of them niggas got trust issues because yeah. <laughs> because listen. They be down play. They see no, it. No, the only reason why they got trust issues they is issues. because they have it in their way, and. They dealing with so many niggas who so called cool, got boyfriends that they like. You hear what they say? I ain't trying to play them games. Nah. <laughs> no. I'm not trying to play you got the boyfriend game, but you got a dick in your fucking hand. Like, what do you mean? I ain't trying to play them games. Yeah, that shit get crazy. Shit be crazy. I should get crazy. I, that's why for me. I just. I like to be friends. Yeah, we wrong? could be friends. We could. I could splash I'd be a good and dash. friend. I say, you feel me? I ain't even trying. I'm saying. I know he could hit it and quit it. He could ejaculate nah, and evacuate. Keep going. <laughs> but yeah. I'm saying, I ain't gonna lie to you. My you could lie to me. I ain't gonna believe you. Yeah. You feel me? You lie to me, huh? Lie to me. Go ahead. <laughs> I ain't going to believe you. That's what I'm saying. You going to have to do a lot for me to start believing. Yeah. yeah. Damn, man. Like, I ain't going for this shit. Damn. So you just chilling. Facts. But you know, word on the streets, you was dating Ice Spice. So you, you know what I mean? Word on the street be a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> it, be wi- it be wild, huh? Word on the street be wild. 
Neff so calm that that shit he, funny he like, to man, me. He, like, he just. Nah. Man, it's been yeah. real in the streets, being a lot of shit, shit man. <laughs> like, but I ain't, you ain't, I mean, I, you did kind of throw that out there. I did kind of look there. I was on the gram or somewhere. What I you seen mean? y'all. What you seen? I seen some shit. I seen, no, I know I seen some shit somewhere. Mm. And it kind of looked like, you know what I mean? But, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> y'all both winning. Y'all both let me Let me tell you something. New York, this is my town, right? I don't talk heavy. I don't for me. I don't really fuck the king of New York shit. Fuck a label or what I'm gonna call it, right? It's my town for All me. Right. That's where okay. I'm from. I'm one of the representatives. When somebody come into the city, and I feel like they're gonna stick around, they're gonna be some. You, you look it. like as in history for me. I pick the right ones. I embrace them. You know what I'm saying? So I used to just one of them, but she a female, so people look at it as yeah. you feel me. But that's you feel me? That's my son. She you feel me? My son. <laughs> that's love. That's love. That's love. All love. That's, that's love. love. And it, and it usually don't be where you see the young niggas embracing. Yeah, niggas. that's that's me. Because the young niggas usually look Anytime, at motherfuckers as competition. You know, there's there's a lot of shit going on, and I don't want to water down my cosign. But any time, you feel me? And you could look in the history. Any time, damn near anybody that stuck around, TJ grabbed them. You feel me? And and assisted anyway. He could, you feel me? That's love. Facts. I don't never, you feel me? You'll never block nobody, get in nobody's yeah. way. Yeah. Never. Never, ever. Ever. Never, ever. That's how you got to do it, man. Because when you put blessings on motherfuckers, more blessings come on you, yeah, man. Yeah, for me, God willingly. Absolutely. Real talk, man. Now, we, I truly we, believe that shit. Where you taking this shit to? With the new album coming out, what level you taking it to? What you getting into? More... You know, where, where is we going to see you at more? Is you getting into any acting? Some Is you getting into brand deals and business stuff? Like, what you got, what you got going on? It's crazy because this is my last album on my label. Oh, so. shit. You ate the bag, the Brinks truck. Ooh. Oh, my God. <laughs> nah, nah, but um, you feel me? This shit really get stupid. Damn, yeah. I heard the motherfucker out there cough like they was sick. Oh, oh shit. This shit really get crazy. What the fuck's going on? Nah, this shit get crazy. Yo, you know how crazy that's going to get this when this shit after the... Just get that check right, nigga. They better go get a yeah, flat nah, bed. They get threw up. He said, he, but, yeah, he reminded the people for the leave this. My last Did they like this? He said, Ooh. He know. You heard motherfucker out there. Ah. The motherfucking numbers you doing. You heard that shit? Yeah. He said, yeah, shit, you know. She get crazy. She get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, that's one of the things I'm most excited about in life, you feel me? Is, you feel me, a fresh start, uh, time to renegotiate things. <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying, wherever life take me, I just know it's up. You know it's saying? super up. It's super up. God damn. <laughs> but, but basically, yeah. So what was the initial question? Shit, he no, talked about that money. He forgot the question. He forgot that. No, like <laughs> niggas started. I was just, that was the first thing I see do the Olympics yeah. on the chair. The nigga said, Ooh. Yeah. he held himself up and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he think about that fucking money. <laughs> no, what I said was, yeah. you know, what's next? Movies, you know, business ventures, brand partnerships. Like, what's you doing next outside of the big check that's coming? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all I, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna keep it a buck. Like, you know what it is? It really took, I really, like, I'm gonna be real, real honest. Like, I got it for me damn near, like, I don't know how far, but I got, like, somewhat accepted into, like, some real shit before, you feel me? Mm-hmm. I kind of felt like I, right, so it was like, I'm a rapper trans, trying to transition into acting, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's like you kind of downgrade a little bit because you're starting off at the bottom Beginning, of the yeah. list. For the acting shit. So uh-huh. it's like, I could go do a show, sing this shit I already know. I don't got to sing this shit. They know that shit. And make more money. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So I'm kind of like, you feel me? Yeah. Uh-huh. And it kind of, it took it took for me to, I feel like, mature at least to this level to see the, you feel the, me, the, the value benefits. in it. Yeah. yeah. But, and to know that, you know what I'm saying? The money I make is like faster than, way, way faster than the average person. So I could put in that little work in. I'm saying go hustle, you know what I'm saying? Bring it back to phase one, what I would have been thinking in the beginning. So but, but the bottom line though is if a if a, a a director call you and he wants you in a movie, you're not getting the average pay that the average motherfucker would get. Mm-hmm. Cause you're little TJ. Mm-hmm. So oh, I went and auditioned for somebody, I'm Johnny Donut, I can act real good. 
Then they getting scaled, man. Here you go, man. You yeah. ain't never getting yeah. scaled. Yeah, you it's been it's been a while though. I think I think I had tried to hop in it like, but I did it so lazy. I looked at I think they looked at the fucking script shit like twenty minutes before. Try going there like yeah, <laughs> and they ain't get it. They like no, nah, nah. Yeah, I don't know. I ain't even the, shit. I'm trying. I got the paper in my hand. I'm trying to read this shit. Act it. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's over. <laughs> you won't you won't do that again though. But nah, I wouldn't do that again. Yeah. That was me, young, like, I got too much money, I don't know what to buy. Yeah. I don't, feel me, I ain't thinking about no act, nigga, right. fuck your shit. <laughs> feel me, at the time, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. Like, <laughs> but now, you feel me, life, like, for me, yeah. I understand things a little better. Yeah. Life yeah. real, you know life what I'm saying? Life raised you up life a little bit. Free, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That nigga said he went there 20 minutes before. What the, give me the script. It was like, <laughs> next person. Pick me. <laughs> it was like next person, get him out of here. You're like, damn, they got they ain't even. <laughs> they was like, get him out of here. I genuinely feel like if I was to go into Talking. space and take it serious, I probably do well. You feel me? I got faith in that. Yeah, but no, man. Like you know, I just think it's opportunities all over for you. You know, brand deals. You ever think about doing any modeling, any clothing brands get at you? Anything? It's crazy because I think it's Friday. I got a boo man collab. I right, yeah. I'm not showing this come out, but. This Friday, yeah, from what right. we, I'm saying, it's a Boohoo Man collab. Yeah. I got a little TGX Boohoo Man shit fire. Yeah. Fire. It's not no bullshit. I want you not genuinely jack it, like deeper than whatever like, like, like the you, business did, is. Did you, help, did you help with the design and stuff? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to go into touching it, you know what I'm saying? So you look forward to getting into more ventures and more stuff? Facts, facts. Like, I just, I don't know, I just started taking fashion a little bit more serious. I kind of like, you know, I understand, like, it was like when I really, like, like, me and my managers, we got this thing, like, before seven and after seven, you feel me? Mm -hmm. B7, A7, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And, like, for me, before seven, I ain't give a fuck about no fashion. I might go get some of Mary, I ain't even think about nothing else. I don't, yeah. If it ain't a Mary, I don't want it. I don't want me. it. I'm just go get some Mary every day. I don't care, I'm TJ. What? Or well, I might, if not, I might be, I might, when I got shot, I think I was in some dirty ups in, in a black tech and I probably was, had like four to five techs for the last five days switching out of those, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just ain't really care, you know what I'm saying? Hair probably wasn't done, you know what I'm saying? Just easy on Fucking, now, I kind of like, I want to get into fashion. I think I actually genuinely like it, you know what I'm saying? I like me putting a little more taste into it, into 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 what I wear, made me feel good. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy though that you blew. You wasn't even into the fashion because now that's really what it's about. Like, but you had a Mary shit on, so you know, yeah. they got a Mary right. shit on. They I wasn't into the fashion. They got an eight thousand dollar outfit on every day. Yup, <laughs> that a Mary shit expensive, man. Nah, but I didn't like think deeper than it. Uh, know? Yeah. It's kind of like. To me, like, you feel me, wearing the same shit all day, especially all the Mary, it's like, hood nigga thinking, you feel me? Yeah. Expanding. But you still, but when the, when the motherfuckers see you, they still said you had that yeah, shit on. Yeah, got that shit on. Yeah. <laughs> they like, yeah, he not playing. They like, this nigga had everything a Mary ever dropped. He said he wore that shit every day. <laughs> yeah. That shit is expensive. That's one thing about y'all youngest, boy. Y'all, back in the day, we had a nice pair of jeans, some nice sneaks, a white tee, and all your jewelry. How much? How much the fit come up to average? On? Shit, two fifty, three hundred, yeah. maybe maybe seven hundred at the most. Wasn't a lot. So so the whole thing is like, man, now you changing the game. You getting it up. It's going get time. You are gonna be perf performing at uh over there in London. You got that thing coming up. You ready for that? Live? No, no, fuck that, man. We not just going downplay this, man. You a nigga from New York City. You about to perform in London, bro. That's a whole different part of the fucking world, man. Do that shit be unbelievable sometimes? Like, do you come out? Because I seen you perform somewhere. Your, your peoples were showing me, man. It was so many lights in that motherfucker, man. That shit was unbelievable, man. Yeah, it's crazy. I ain't going to lie to you. Like, on the Lodo... I wouldn't even want to spoil you it and just like damn near like 
be like, oh, like for me, for somebody who might be interested in that question, like how does it feel to me? It's kind of honestly becoming normal. Oh. It's like, you feel me? It's like, damn near like, you feel me? Like when I go on the stage at first, it used to be like, damn, I get hyped to see them. Feel me? Get hyped. You feel me? I still get hyped. I enjoy myself every time I go on the stage. You feel me? But it's like, you feel me? It's like, damn, like this my life now. That shit crazy. Cause it's like, it's not like I feel like I blew up late. I damn near blew up as I was learning what life is. You feel me? Still, so it's like I feel like damn. my specific life is this. Beautiful fucking life. Man, is it? <laughs> For you real. Got, you, got, you got rolling loud popping. You got everything. You ready to start hitting the circuit again. You know, mm. you ready to be on tour for like a, a year now. You should drop. When this album drop, it's a wrap. Yeah. You're going to be going. That's a good thing, though. I really feel like this album going to be special, though. Like, I got like, I don't even got a doubt about it in my mind at all. Like, for real. That's what I'm talking Yo, about. They probably been waiting on you. You know it hasn't been a hip-hop record to go number one in 2023, right? Yeah. I think somebody tagged me and I reposted it. That, that, like, on, like you coming, on nigga. Too. Facts. No, no, I'm, Facts. I'm coming. You God coming. willing, hopefully that, I could be that guy. Absolutely, man. Matter of fact, we could speak it into existence because I believe that if you got 18 million monthly listeners and you ain't dropped in two years, it ain't even no doubt in my mind people fuck with you. Mm -hmm. They just wait. Mm -hmm. That's all they doing. They just sitting I back. I know exactly like, what they waiting on. <laughs> Ooh, you know exactly what they waiting on too, huh? Yeah. And you go, and, and, and that's on this album. What's the name of the album? Two twenty two. Two twenty two. That's right. You did tell us that. Two twenty two. TJ. Best album to come. Ooh. Okay. 2023 now. Now listen, we putting the speculations all the bed right now. 2023, we're going to speak this shit into existence because that's what we do. It has not been a hip-hop album that's one number one. We about to speak this into existence. Lil TJ is going number one on the charts. Facts. Billboard. Facts. On the billboard. Facts. You got a loyal fan base, man. They love you. They fuck with you, man. Love me. I love them. We love each other. Yeah, man. You got and, loyal. And I'm going to keep it above with you. Like... I love like, it's only so much you for me. I'm really, but this right here, I'm back in this. It's not no love for me. This is me. This is me dropping. This is genuine TJ album. You know what I'm saying? Nobody came, forced me to do nothing. I love this album. You feel me? I think they gonna love it. I hope they love it. You feel me? Yeah. It's up. It's up. It's mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Nothing is that shit going all the way up. Now. You know, New York got a lot of rappers, right? Who who you who you who you checking out right now on the come up? Y'all got a lot of motherfucking rap. On the come up. That's a good question. Um definitely a lot of rappers coming up. Um J Dog Geek. Okay. J Dog Geek, that's my boy. Uh -huh. He going crazy, he got his own little wave, I'm jacking it, you know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Like I like it because of the original, you know what I'm saying? He he going up, he doing this thing. I'm jacking the um the four one boys too. Mm -hmm. Kyle Rich and them. Jen Carter, Tata, they doing their things. And you feel me? You know it's it's a lot of people dang you put me on the spot cause I don't want to feel me. Yeah. Leave nobody out. But you know, Lola Brooke over overdoing yeah. her thing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never even like really got to meet her and chop it up with her, but you know, she doing her thing. Mm -hmm. And slide them. Shout out to everybody for me. That's Sorry right. I missed anybody with facts. Yeah, there's a lot out there doing anything. New York got a little, got a wave with them, bro. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of motherfucking niggas in New York doing their way, doing anything, and I'm going to keep it all the way real. New York was starving for some years. They were starving. Yeah. Y'all young niggas brought it back. Yeah, one of my goals, one of my goals in life it's like you feel me to make sure this New York shit is sturdy, and it's kind of making it hard because they be on some weird shit. I don't know what they eating, feel me doing on the other back end side, feel me. But one of my things, one of my goals has always been uh, from the kindness of my heart is to try to stir this shit up. You feel me? Like for example, if somebody from New York, an artist, damn near like any artist from New York, if let's say if I know somebody they don't know and they trying to, and they got a song and they need, I always try to connect the dots or. You feel me? Do what I do, you know what I'm saying? Just to make sure the city shine together. Right. 
And that's nice. what good motherfuckers don't understand. You help a motherfucker, you look up three years from now, they may be bigger than you now. Now you could go back to them and get the favor because and it, it just recycles itself. But when motherfuckers don't extend no hands, then a motherfucker like, nobody ain't help me get his shit. Nobody ain't yeah. do that for me. So now it's that's, a that, that's a cycle. That, ain't nobody I help was me, one man. of those. I felt like, I always felt like, I damn near like I didn't do everything for myself. So for me, I never really had no like real co-sign or that. So I always felt like you know, I know how that feeling is, and I want to always you feel me at least be some type of help to somebody. You know what I'm saying whatever they need. You know what I'm saying if it's some advice on what they should sign, you feel me? Yeah. Or whatever it is. You know what I'm saying I, I we could for me I could help you out if I could. That's 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 solid, man. That's fucking good, man. Good shit. Because you know so many people come up, and when you got to do it from the muscle, you feel as though, like, man, ain't nobody help me. Facts. Fuck that. And I don't be on no, like, bougie shit. Like, mm -hmm. I always hit them new artists and congratulate them and tell them I like their stuff, man. And what's so crazy is, what's so crazy is, to a, to a nigga like TJ, who just generally being thorough, like, oh, I like this shit. You DM a motherfucker, that shit mean the world to the motherfucker you mm -hmm. DM'd. You a, you a DM a motherfucker and forget you DM'd them and shit. Then they'll see you and then you be like, oh, damn, I did DM you. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah that shit is. And that shit meant the world to them. They may have been ready to get a fuck up. You don't know what motherfuckers going through in life. And then they got a DM from you and they like, damn. Because honestly, that's a sign from God. Mm -hmm. If he put it on your heart to DM a motherfucker that they shit is nice, they shit, that's a sign from them, from God, that mm -hmm. damn, okay, I got to keep going. Mm -hmm. I got to work harder. Damn, such and such acknowledge me. That sometimes that's all motherfuckers be needing is some acknowledgement. Exactly. Somebody to tell them, dog, you good. Yeah. No, 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 dog. You really good. I like this shit. And... That could come from a homie, but it really means something to a motherfucker when it come from a motherfucker that made it. From your city? That's like, oh, man. It's like a real stamp. That's like a real stamp because you ain't have to tell the world. You told me. That I was not expecting this DM to come. I had no idea you was going to DM me. I just so happened to look at my message. I seen the blue check. That shit said, TJ, I'm like, yo, man, your shit dope, dog. You like Strong that. arm. Nigga like now, this nigga showed every fucking body that he know in his family, his homies, motherfuckers. He showed everybody twice. Yo, I told you. Those. When he go to the nigga, record. Nigga, you showed me that shit already. When he go to the record label, <laughs> when he tell the, in the record label in Atlantic, he's like, yo, look. Yeah, Columbia, look, look. I'm telling you, I'm probably. They fucking with me. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. He hit me up. So, to, if, you could, if you could shine a little love on a motherfucker that you fucking with. I'm not asking you to tell a bullshit nigga nothing. You see a nigga, he got, man, show a nigga a little love. This shit don't show cost you nothing. Show some love, man. man. Shit don't cost love. you nothing, man. And I'll tell you this much. Everybody, everybody ain't going to remember the love, feel me? Everybody ain't going to show the love back, feel me? You might not get the same blessings back in the same way you wanted to, but that ain't what you got to do it for. Right. That Absolutely. ain't what you do it for, you feel me? Yeah. I do it for the culture, you feel me? I want my city to win. I want to be, like, damn near, like, not the other part about it, but then the thug of how thug is for Atlanta, like how yeah. he kind of put everybody in position. You know what I'm saying? I damn near feel like I'm building that. You know what I'm saying? Like all these artists that's coming up, going to say in the beginning stages, TJ was, you know what I'm saying? He was dead. He that's was what saying. it's about, man. And that's and that's what it's about. I, that's all I want. I just want to feel me. Uplift. Miss Tyler, man. Well, let me just say this, man. We want to thank you for coming through, brother. You know, we've been trying to get you for a minute. You know that. For a minute. You've been that nigga for a minute. You know what I'm saying? A year and a half ago, I talk, I called Polo. Like, Yo, man. Let me tell TJ, I need, you know. He hit me about it. I was, you know. But you know, like you say, you believe that everything happens for, for a reason. reason. Yeah, this this when we needed to do it. Absolutely. That's when we needed to do it. Absolutely, nice. because the game that... The young niggas that's watching is gonna get off of this from how solid you was with just keeping it real. Yeah. A lot of niggas need to see that. A lot of young niggas that look up to you need to see that. So, cause they might say to themselves, damn, I'm doing this wrong, or I'm doing this wrong. I need to humble myself a little bit before life humble me. 
Mm -hmm. You feel they needed to see that. So million dollars worth of game, man, we got the utmost respect for you for just coming here and just being solid and keeping it real and ain't got to put no no fake wall up, ain't got to put no fake fence up, ain't got to act tough. You just came here and was Lil TJ, man. Uh, and that's all million dollars worth of game is about. Real motherfuckers just connecting and just kicking it and just having a conversation. Uh, Keep going up on these niggas. Facts, facts. Number one album in 2023. I'm speaking it to existence. Yeah, speak on two, it. two, two, two. Huh? Two, two, two. Gonna end up one, 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 nigga. One, and one, it's just one. like that. Right.